Hey everybody, it's Daryl back again. Uh, yes, I have a cowboy hat on. I've had this thing forever. I'm trying to keep my ears from getting burnt. It's not one of them little YouTube fads that uh, you see in all these little YouTubers throwing their little cowboy hats on trying to be cowboy-ish. But that's not what the video is about. This is what we're working on. I went to work today, came back, and picked up where I left off the other day on this. We're putting up woven wire fence. This fence is uh, 39 inches tall. And uh, some of my work. This is where uh, this row ended. And that row that you can't see right around the end of that pole down there started. Uh, I got my poles braced up and then I got my other wires in there. Depending upon what picture you see on the internet, this might need to be up there and down there. I don't know, I've done them both ways and those right there are pretty much to pull the poles tight and keep them from moving. But that's what we've been working on. This right here is the, if you're standing at the barn, the left side of the irrigation hole. This right here is where the pond drops off and goes down in the water. We got to uh, do something about here. When they dug this, it was a lagoon at one time, dug it out, they piled all the clay and stuff up here and uh, it's hard for anything to grow up here so i'm gonna try to get enough compost going where i can kind of broadcast it out here and see if we can't get it uh tilled in and see if we can't get grass growing over here like it needs to be uh we got a little bit of grass growing in certain parts of here but for the most part it's uh all weeds but it's like grandpa used to say if you can't grow a weed you can't grow anything else so we've got lots of weed growing out here uh so there might be a chance we can get some bermuda started i think over here is where the grain drill started giving us some issues and we probably ended up just saying the heck with it and ended it up but right here's where some of the grass is up you can see the little rows of it that's a uh, fescue with a little bit of bermuda mixed in it here and there it is a little bit of bermuda trying to come up but for the most part, it's them little briar looking things and crabgrass and whatever that stuff is and just a little bit of ever else, all this other stuff. Another good thing about over here is the sunsets. Uh, the sunsets over here are always good because we don't have the trees blocking it off. We can actually see it. As you can see, the corn around us, as we like to call it, our seasonal privacy fence is up and doing good. They've already sprayed it with the uh, nitrogen. They did that probably three or four weeks ago. You spray nitrogen on corn, did it get it to grow? And most of the time it's liquid. At least everything they spray around here is liquid. But uh, you spray liquid nitrogen on corn, you can about sit in the field and watch it grow. Uh, it just gets it on the go. They put nitrogen on it and they spray. Well, that's Roundup Ready corn, so they spray Roundup on it too to kill the things. But I don't know where it cut out at, but we got the, the pasture goes all the way over there where them beehives is at. But as you can see, we got a good stand of Bermuda going. We're not quite a full moon, but we're working on it. Another reason for this video is I'm gonna eventually load up every beehive I've got and take them over to my mother's house on a trailer and then when I bring them back I'm actually going to put them on the inside of this duck pasture right here's the corner post on the other side and the other corner post is right there on the other side of those beehives move all the hives away from over here I'm going to bring them back we're going to put them all along the side of the uh, pond over here and over there on the other side and that way they're in here with the ducks and chickens and probably sheep and goats if we get some of those and uh turkeys there might be a turkey or two flying in and out of here and uh that way they're over here we can get to worry about the cows messing with them knocking them over or anything like that but uh that's what's been going on here lately i've made a couple videos but i ain't had time to edit them so hopefully i'll get home here in a little bit get this one edited and let it upload tonight and hopefully I'll be ready for y'all on tuesday morning uh I didn't get to wish all the daddies 
Happy Father's Day. So we're gonna do that now. Happy Father's Day. Jenny the Mule is doing good. Come here, Jenny Mule. She's not a big fan of the cowboy hat yet. Come on. Let's go. But this is Jenny Mule. She looks like she's pregnant, but if you know anything about horses and mules, mules cannot get pregnant because they are kind of like a hybrid. They're a cross between a horse and a donkey. But she's fat. She ain't as bulged out now, but her, uh, when she's, uh, got through eating, she does look kind of chunky. Big boy there is looking good. He's trying out to be a pretty horse. And then I forgot what her calls her. Rosie, I think. She's feeling out good. We took those biggest hogs to the market. I don't know if I had did a video on that or not. The biggest one weighed 480 pounds. We were guessing at the most 350. Hope's daddy was saying 375. When I told him they were worth, that one of them was 480 pounds, he was like, there ain't no way in the world. But there it was. If you've got this on your beehive going on, this is normal when they get. A lot of bees in the hives, they uh, they beard out on the front like this right here, and this is just to uh, help keep it cool in the hive. As you can see, them little girls is fanning, trying to pull heat out of the hive, and then these are just hanging out, doing their own thing. I have not been a very good beekeeper. I have not checked on any of these hives in the past probably month at least. But uh, I ain't had time. When I get home in the afternoon, the weather's crap. And uh, so I got to get on it before they start swarming again. But here's one of our gates we put up. So we've been working on that. I've done a couple videos on doing this and I'm gonna splice them together kind of like a little how-to videos on how to put these up. I've got to come through and make some more uh, wires to go on these posts because of the stuff that I'm using to uh, pull the wires or the fence tight to these. Only works if they're facing one dire the right direction, like that one there. As long as they're facing like that to the fence, those pieces work on there. But if they're facing the other way, they're useless. So I'm going to have to make me some wire pieces, wrap it around there and just twist it tight and let it go. Uh, these fences are nice, but there's a lot of work to putting them up. Between putting the wood post in, putting the metal post down, and then stretching it tight and getting everything where it needs to be at, where it's good and tight. It's a lot of work. It took me, the stretching it out and all that stuff ain't that bad, but just getting everything ready to do it. I got to come back through and cut my wood post off. Well, I might just leave them like this. I'm not anal about that. Some people are just, ah, everything's got to be straight and pretty and everything's got to be along the same height and stuff. I don't care, the ducks don't care. The cows, the hogs, all that stuff, they don't care. Something else I'm gonna do over here, I'm gonna run at least one wire on the outside of this. That's the reason why I alternated my T-post because of the way my insulators are gonna clip on there. And I'm gonna put one on the inside and then I'm gonna run another one across the top up here. And it's gonna be the top by about, it's gonna be sticking off the top by about this much right here. That way if any, like a duck or, or a chicken or whatever lands up here, they're going to touch the hot wire and they're going to touch the fence. And it's going to light their little butt up. So hopefully that's going to deter them from jumping out. Uh, we got them to clip their wings on one side too. If you've got chickens and you don't want to fly them out, you cut their wings on one side. They're flat feathers. Because if you cut them on both sides, they can kind of get used to flying with a few flat feathers. And sometimes they can get in the air. If you cut off one side, it, it throws them off balance. And you ain't got to worry about them really. Trying to 
fly out. But uh, I'm gonna show you one more part about the fence and then we're gonna end this video. See, this is, this is what the fence looks like before we pull it tight. And that's what it looks like after we pull it tight. And if you'll notice, pretty straight rows. Pretty. Hope come out here and help me drive down T-poles and she's getting a little aggravated because she couldn't get them drove down just right. And we had to do a lot of adjusting on them and stuff. And I can drive them down and they go in like they're supposed to. And she's like, I don't understand how you can do this and I can't. I was like, it's practice. I've driven a lot of T-poles. So uh, if you're doing stuff like this, don't get discouraged. Anybody can put a fence down like this right here. But most people are scared to do it. They got it in their mind that they can't do it. And so can't keeps a lot of people from doing stuff that they can do. They're just scared to try. I learned how to put this fence down by watching two or three YouTube videos. I did it around the house, and I'm doing one here. I'd love to be able to do it all the way around this farm, but when it's all said and done, this small little pasture right here, I'll probably have about $1,500 in it. Now, can you imagine having to pay somebody to put this in? One of my neighbors over here across from where my uh, in-laws stay at, the guy that originally owned that house, he put the small wire in this, about this wide. It's the red brand. I think they call it the sheet and goats or something like that anyway it only comes in 100 foot rolls and i want to say it's 250 300 a roll where this is it's either 250 or 300 it might be 350 but it's 330 feet but uh that guy told me he said he had over ten thousand dollars in the fence behind his house because he had to buy the supplies and he had to pay somebody to put it in so woven wire fences are expensive if you've got to pay somebody to put them in. If you do it yourself, you save a lot of money. Somebody probably charge, I'd probably have $6,000 in this fence. Five to $6,000 if somebody, if I had to pay somebody to come out here and do this. So you can't get a whole lot done working, getting off at five, running home, trying to spend some time with the family and trying to get this done. Most time, uh, hoping the boys come over here and she tries to help me out best she can. If I'm doing stuff she can't really help me with, she pulls pigweed. That's the reason why I didn't hardly any pigweed in that field over there because she has pulled so much of it up uh, by hand, put it in the trailer. Pigs actually eat uh, pigweed. Uh, I would have never guessed that because cows won't touch it, but the pigs will eat it up. So when we get our pigs back from the uh, processor, I'll let y'all know what we ended up with. I'm thinking we're gonna get probably close to 300 pounds of sausage. Uh, USDA inspector inspected facility so we'll be able to sell this meat once I get my meat handling license and the good thing about USDA is you can actually ship it which I don't know what it takes to ship stuff like that but uh, we're going to at least be able to sell some of it and try to get our money back because uh, we've spent a lot of money over here since we've started this endeavor so just wanted to tell y'all that I'm gonna get on this four wheeler right here. We're gonna go drop the trailer, lock the gate, go home, take a shower, spend an hour or so with the boys and mama, and uh, go to bed and start all over again tomorrow. We love y'all, we appreciate y'all. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up on the video, please. It helps with the growth of the channel and gets me motivated to make more videos. If we can get a decent day, I'm gonna to try to jam out several beekeeping videos all in one day and then we'll spread them out over a couple of weeks and uh, get them out to y'all so y'all can see how our bees are doing and all that other good stuff. Uh, we'll talk to y'all later. And as always, we'll see y'all on the next one.